We are Nigel and Sue, and we've been living the van life for almost four years now. We bought this van in Germany in June and plan to travel Europe for the next few years. After a wonderful six weeks exploring the north of Italy, we left the van in the long-term parking at Rome Airport while we spent six weeks outside the Schengen zone. Nigel at work flying a helicopter in Saudi, and Sue pet-sitting in the UK. We've had varying levels of stress about the van sitting there in the airport car park. Will it still be there when we get back? Will it be damaged or broken in? Keep watching as we make our way back to Rome, we reunite with each other and hopefully our tiny home on wheels. It all starts with coffee. It's um, quarter past five in the morning, you know, just over an hour. Being picked up to go to the airport for a much needed six week break. And that is pretty much it. Morning friends, so yeah, it's always very exciting the prospect of um, getting off on break and um, you know talking to the boys last night, you know, we jointly agree that six weeks of BS, uh, you know, hard work and, and everything that goes with it is why we do it is for the um, quality time we have off. Plenty of time, I do have to be rushed in the morning when it comes to getting to the airport. It's worth getting up that little bit earlier to get organised. The van's parked up in Rome and uh, you know, it's been there for six weeks so hopefully <laughs> number one the battery isn't um, going to malfunction on us and um, number two the van's there uh, in one piece. Uh, it should be it's in a secure lock, lock up but um, yeah, you can't help so sort of wondering about that. It was a happy sight when the chariot turns up. You're on your way home. You betcha. That's the check-in process done. Door Roma. Morning friends, here I am at the airport, London City Airport, getting ready to go back to Rome. It's 5.30 in the morning. I caught an Uber here today because I just couldn't face trying to get the DLR and the tube this early in the morning. So the big journey back to Rome begins. Nigel is at the airport in Saudi, ready to jump on his plane. And then we go and find out is the van still there? Is it in one piece? <laughs> Does it still have wheels? <laughs> Number plates? It's gonna be an exciting day, even if a little bit stressful. So I've made it through. I'm currently just sitting here doing some work, enjoying a coffee. It's still only 20 past seven. Um, the flight leaves in just over an hour. It's still dark outside. Nigel is on his plane, on the way, plane's left, so yeah, although he arrives after me, I think his flight's about six hours and mine's about two and a half. Get a bit more work done and then we'll be on the plane. Sun's coming up, but no plane yet. Plane has arrived, time to board. Just waiting for Nigel to get here. I'm watching, and his flight is actually on the first board, so that's good news. He's about an hour before landing. So while I'm waiting for him, I just had a bit of pizza, and I'm gonna go and see if I can find where we catch the bus to the long term parking. I have no idea where it dropped us off, I can't remember at all. Nigel's plane has landed, so I'm just waiting for him to come through. Watching, watching, should be. Any minute, he landed about 20 minutes ago, I think. I came through so quickly today and my bag was the first one off the carousel. So I hope that doesn't mean his is gonna be slow. Here he comes. Yeah. 
a happy time. <laughs> happy days. <laughs> right, so here we are, waiting for the bus to take us back to the car park. We're gonna get out of that car park. I oh, know. It's gonna it's, gonna be an adventure. Yeah, what do we do next thing? Can we get out? We're on the bus. I'm trying to remember which actual parking place we stopped at. I think it was the purple one. Okay, we are off the bus and the van is there. <laughs> Good news. Now we've got to have a look. I don't reckon there's as many... Oh, it's night gone. Oh, there you are. I don't reckon there's as many cars blocking the way. So it looks like it's going to be a lot easier to get out today. Let's just have a quick reminder of what it was like getting into this car park. It's still quite tight, but there was cars parked right up to that thing. Yeah making it very difficult to turn but yeah you can see here how these people are parked like all over the road not actually in parking spots there is the pos pos still got wheels still got number plates yeah so our sliding door was slightly ajar let's check the back Good. Yeah, everything's still there. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, it's, it's, it's just weird because we, we checked everything. It was, kind of, it was a bit like that, wasn't it? Yeah. And it wouldn't open. Hang on, now that now it's soft closed, things not going. Oh, shit, maybe the battery's dead. Oh dear. What do you think's happened, Nigel? Well, let's have a look. I've got a horrible feeling the battery might be dead. Well, we're not sure if this, if the door is operated by the house battery under there. And when we go up and have a look at the panel here, um, we've got a horrible feeling we just left the, um, the power on. So it wasn't powering anything other than this little LED light. And maybe there's, yeah. our, there's our tester for the house battery. The house battery's dead. Not the lithium one. 11.4, that's not ideal for a lead acid battery. The, the car battery's good, so we'll get a little bit of charge with yeah. that. Just to clarify, you may remember that we added an electrical system with solar panels on the roof and a 200 amp hour lithium battery. This system runs our new fridge, some USB ports, our toilet fan, and a internal light that I'm just about to install. We kept the existing 100 amp hour lead acid battery which is underneath the passenger seat here. This battery powers the internal lights, the water pump and the electric step. We really have no idea why the soft closing door mechanism allowed the door to flop out. If you have any suggestions pop them in the comments below. Thankfully the door remained locked. Now let's see if this old girl will start. Mm -hmm. Starts first time. Whoop whoop. And we're off. Get past the nutty here. Yeah, I know. In the middle of the goddamn road. He really is, isn't he? Thank goodness those cars are gone. Much easier to get out than it was to get in. Okay, now where do we go? I think we go. No, and just go, just left after this pole, I think, yeah. Having trouble. We're having trouble getting out. Communication was just about impossible through the pillar, so I went into the office. <laughs> Bit of fun and games getting out of the car park. <laughs> but we're out. We're on the way to Roma. After a short drive, we arrived at the campsite. Definitely a good spot to stay. The Who Camping Roma in town. They even roll out the red carpet. So we've got fresh water and grey water right here by the reception. And just like that, here we are. Back in our home. Yeah, awesome. So they have a little supermarket here in the campsite, but as usual in Italy, they close between 12 and 4.30 for their siesta. 
One of the first things we need to do now being back in the van is a big grocery shop. And fortunately, there's a grocery store right across the street from the camping place. They are super geared up for Christmas here. <laughs> I don't see many decorations though. Lots of Christmas food and alcohol. So when you're selecting your fruit and veg, you have to put a glove on. And then once you've got it, you put it in a bag. All this plastic, I know, not good. But anyway, it's the way it's done. So you pop it on, put the number in. And it tells you what it is. Melanzani Striati gives you the ticket. We've got three bags of groceries for less than 100 euros. Not bad. Not bad. There is two bottles of wine in there, Nigel. Reality check number two, washing the sheets. And then straight away, while Sue's sorting out her bits and bobs, I've got a present. So that been hanging out for these lights and they're going to... Um, go under there. They're going to go... Uh, down there. Well, I was thinking going across here so, so that the light comes out to where we're okay um yeah because yeah, we've got we've got that light yeah uh there cool. so we we're need we need in. yeah so nigel's only been back in the van for <laughs> a couple of hours and he's already pottering he's already pottering what's he like he's fitting this new light which should be good because as you can see the light situation is not great <laughs> so nigel <laughs> Welcome back to the van. I was hooking into some car choffy. <laughs> Salute. Welcome Cheers. back to the van. To both of us. Cheers. It's an Italian beer. What is it? Mar it's Moretti? A, uh, Moretti, yeah, mm. the, uh, the Pale Ale IPA one. Yeah, it's oh. nice. So we've got some Roman cheeses from this region. This one's called a. Roma Buona Pezzana. I don't know what that means. Buona being good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Is it Roma? I don't know what that... Oh. It doesn't actually look like a... It doesn't look like a Roma. Toma, maybe. I don't know what mm. that means. Anyway, I thought it's... it did. It's from this region, Lazio. And this one's a Roma al tartufo, which is um, truffles. We've got some beautiful olives, cacciofini, spacciati, artichokes. artichokes, and these are great, gran pavesi sfoglie, classiche. Mm, so these are just of, the little crackers. Oh, I've got a bit of soft spot for my and I just got prosciutto. prosciutto. I have to go easy on the prosciutto this time. Mm. We're eating some Italian specialty foods. And soon we're going to have, where is it? Penne Arabiata. Good morning, friends. Here we are in Rome at the campsite. We're about to go and jump on the shuttle bus, which is going to take us into Rome. It's a bit chilly, <laughs> but it's blue sky day. So I think it's going to be nice. We have left our big jackets at home in the van. <laughs> Let's go get the bus. So this is the bus yeah, that we're taking. Bus. Yeah. Into the city. It's a shuttle bus belonging to the campsite. And if you book the campsite online, the shuttle bus is included. Otherwise, it's five euros. And it takes us from the campsite directly to the Vatican. Buongiorno. Do you need the ticket? Oh, oh, buongiorno. Do you need the ticket? Yeah, okay. It's okay. Buongiorno. Grazie. The bus has dropped us off in what looks like just a suburban street. But just around the corner is the entrance to the Vatican Museums. We're not going there. We're going to go up here and jump on a metro to the main train station. So we can go and pick up our presents from Amazon. Yeah. More camera equipment. Guys, we, we use Revolut. It's just so much easier to um, put a whole bunch of different currencies in one wallet. 
So we've just transferred some euros uh, into the euro account, from Aussie dollars to euro. And, and this, this is another great system where you can simply use your card to get on and off the trains. And boom. No, here, oh. bud. <coughs> Did you spot the deliberate mistake? There we go. So just a few parcels. <laughs> so we were following the map to come here and it's like literally the Amazon pickup point is just in this yeah, little tiny kiosk. Little, tiny little kiosk, yes. <laughs> uh, the reason we had to um, pick a spot like this is because the, the um, collection lockers are too small for items such as this. This is uh, the um, uh, tripod for the camera. Mm. Let's go to one of the benches and open them and get rid of some packaging. That sorted, we jumped back on the metro and began sightseeing Rome. Join us next week as we show you the best things to do in Rome, the eternal city. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'll see you.